It's just learn to calculate what the... Uh, Like that, that's a calculation. Hi guys, this is Matthias coming at you here with a video about my favorite tank and the tank loadout. It's the Saint Germond with the standoff package. Yes, keep in mind this is not the default package. So if you want to use this one, you have to make sure to unlock this upgrade. Now to me, and I think to a lot of you guys also, this will definitely be the best choice of tank, at least in a lot of situations. Now keep in mind, there definitely are drawbacks to this choice, and I'll talk about at least some of them, uh, the ones that matters the most to me anyway, during this video. So let's start with the good things first. Personally, I'm not entirely sure which one I think is the most important, but let's start with the secondary gun. Now, not only is this a chain gun that allows for consistent damage towards infantry and light armored vehicles, but the main thing about this is that, unlike for the most other tanks and other loadouts, the secondary chain gun is not affected by the cooldown between each shot for the primary, and vice versa. For example, it's not all that uncommon that the secondary is the canister, kind of like a shotgun. But if you are on cooldown for a second or two after you've shot your primary, you will be on cooldown during this time even with your secondary. And that is what I think a massive disadvantage with that tank com or that loadout compared to what you see me using here. I turn it into a reflex to instantly switch to the secondary the moment that I fired a shot. What I do is that I either try to finish off an inventory player that I wasn't able to kill with the primary, or I completely switch target and focus on something that I can kill or damage with the chain gun. Now a side note here also, I have to mention this. Uh, what you see from here on and up until about the 10 minute mark is directly, of course, as always, from the stream. But uh, what I did was, uh, after I switched server, I forgot to remove the background wallpaper and uh, everything that you see here from now on should of course have been visible my on my Twitch stream. My so as so I wonderful. promised after I realized this mistake, this is that footage that you missed if you were one of those guys who were watching. Now back to the strength of this tank or this loadout. The standoff package is equipped with spotting light and smoke. Both are great, but I think the spotting light is the winner. This amazing utility spots anything in its line of sight. And what I normally do is that I try to just sweep over the map with it so that basically it highlights every enemy of the for you visible part of the map. I know that going into this, uh, into this uh, capture zone now is suicide, but I'll do it anyway. Now, one of the things that is important for your success as a tanker is placement, where you are on the map. And normally, if you can stay away from buildings, you really should. Now, the problem with that strategy is, of course, that you're going to be a bit campy, and you'll, for the most part, also stay away from the capture zones, something that, of course, can make it a lot harder for your team to either capture or defend that flag, especially capture, actually. Now, personally, I prefer to stay a little bit away from the buildings and normally also just outside of the capture zone while you letting my team use the tank as a spawn point. Now, if you use that strategy correctly, it can be very, very powerful, but not always something that you can expect during a match with the random players. If you play with a lot of friends, however, that strategy is probably going to be very, very good. Now, if you try that strategy and uh, maybe you even encourage your people to do so by using the in-game chat, then try to place yourself in a way so that if the people actually do spawn in your tank and they try to get to the flag, they don't have to run for about 50 meters over a completely open area. Oh, All that's going to do is give you a lot of a frustrated teammates and, uh, and it's not going to help out as much as you might I'm want sorry. to. So let's focus on the drawback of this package compared to the other two packages of the saint Germain. Personally, I think the main weakness is related to the passenger seats. It has one less passenger and probably, or in many cases anyway, the most important passenger is the one that is missing. The one that can shoot straight forward. Got him! 
So yeah, for obvious reasons, the advantages of having a guy who can use a separate gun shooting in the same direction as the primary or the driver, that goes without saying, right? There's, there's no denying that. But how often does it happen that you have that kind of gunner and that you and your team actually benefit from it? Well, that's up to you to decide, of course. And on top of that, having an extra seat in the tank can have many advantages. Again, it depends on what kind of teammates you have. So now if we continue comparing with the other packages of the Saint Chamond, of course you have the different utilities. Now a lot of people really like the artillery strike, that, uh, well, the, the iconic thing when you send out the pigeon. And in many situations, instead of having the smoke, you can have the emergency repair. That can have its uses. Personally, I think I prefer the smoke. I think it's better, but uh, it's very situational and it's just my opinion. Now with the gas assault package, the main difference is actually with the main gun. The benefit is of course its splash damage, where if you hit a wall, it bounces in one direction, normally randomly, and you can kill people that, act that you actually miss with several meters. Once you know how to handle it, or once you get used to it, you can actually calculate for that, and you can, uh, you can predict where it's going to bounce, and you can shoot people that are clearly out of line of sight. With the utility of the gas assault tank, the, the one that just drops a gas grenade next to your tank, I think it's for the most part almost useless. But yeah, I've got a few kills that way, and maybe I've forced somebody to put on a gas mask every once in a while, but it doesn't even compare to the spotting light of this package. Fact is, it's actually quite painful looking at this footage, knowing that I, in many situations, could have used the spotting light when I just forget to press that key. Thanks for opening the gate. Come on guys, you can spawn on me. Oh, I got a repair off. So yeah guys, this is the part that you missed during the stream. A few minutes, I really do apologize for it, and uh, I promise not to do it again. I'm sure I'm gonna be able to keep that promise, right? How is it we can't take this? Oh fuck! Sorry! Oops. <laughs> it's a good thing I can record this. I'm so into the game. Well, you only missed 33 kills, guys, sorry. 
yeah, two different categories of using smoke. One is defensively, one is offensively. And then there are plenty of different uh, categories aside from that. So yeah, hope you will enjoy the rest of the video. My name is Matthias, and I want to thank you all for watching. See how much drop it has. You have to aim like so high to actually hit. With the uh, primary. Yeah, that didn't hit. Ah, shooting above him. There we go. Ah, that was too many. ZB Creeper with a hundred bits. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Nice. <laughs> I got them. He tried to kill me. Alright, it's over. Oh, he had been shooting me so much, that guy. So nice to get rid of him. 